Hi everyone, welcome to this video looking at an Educast Paper 1 reading mock. Um, so the reading exam is one hour, it's five questions, and you get an extract from 1900 to 1999. So we're going to go through all five questions, show you how to get top marks, or especially go at least get a grade four. Um, yeah, if this comes up in the video at some point, um, this is when I take my students to make notes. Obviously, you can pause the video if you want to do that. Just don't be confused by it. Uh, if it comes up, it probably means I think it's a good point for you to write down for your revision. So like I said, um, it's five questions in the exam. You have an hour. You need about an 18 out of 40 to get a grade four. Every 10 mark question, that means you need to get at least four out of 10. And both the five mark questions, you need to get a couple out of 10. Obviously, if you want to get higher grades, your average mark needs to go higher. So there's five questions, and um, the same five questions will appear. I'll talk about the order in a second. So you get a bullet point question, which is basically information retrieval. You get an impressions question, where you're saying what you think of a character. You've got two how questions, which is about a writer's technique. And then you get an evaluation question, which is the one where you agree and then say why. So the rough timings for the hour would be the five mark questions give yourself four, five, six minutes. A bit more for question two is you have to analyse language. Question one, you're just finding quotes. Um, for the how questions and the last question is about 15 minutes each. The main thing about the exam is once you don't spend more than the time allotted on the question you've got to finish the exam on average question five is by far the worst mark for the students and that is because people run out of time not because it's a particularly hard question reasons why students don't get a grade four previously in exams or maybe in your predicted grades too much time spent on the five mark questions far too much feature spotting that's what I mean by that is a student will pick out a quote, say that's a simile or that's personification, but then won't exp explain the effect on the reader. More quotes needed. That is the key part of the exam, and I will say that quite a lot. It's all about quotes and shorter explanations. So we, it's not English literature where we need you to do 10 lines on one quote. Try to do a really short explanation before you move on to your next quote. You must time manage. So good exam technique would be to leave a one line gap between each PE, start a new page for each question. That means you can go back and do more at the end if you have five minutes. Remember, put the quotation marks around every quote. If it doesn't look like a quote and the examiner's skimming it, they might not give you a mark. So this is what I mean by even if you haven't finished a page, yeah, just go through it. So that means, for example, if I've got five minutes left and I want to add a few more quotes to question two, it's a lot easier. And also, leaving a line makes it nice and simple for the examiner. The mock we're looking at and the extract we're looking at is based on normal people. So it's a BBC series that's still on iPlayer. Um, it's also a book. Well, originally it was a book that was made into the series. If you're not familiar with normal people, uh, it's a novel about the relationship between two Irish young people called Connell Waldron and Marianne Sheridan. It opens with Connell, a popular boy at school, and Marianne, an outsider, meeting at Marianne's house. Connell's mother, Lorraine, is a cleaner for Marianne's family, but Connell and Marianne pretend not to know each other at school. So there's a slight class difference between the two of them. So let's look at the question. I look at the exam either. So read carefully the passage, blah, blah, blah. And then it tells us a little bit of context here. And it says the story in the separate resource material is set in Trinity College, a university in Dublin. So what I will try to do is I'll try to um, put some little clips of normal people in this video if YouTube allowed me. Um, if you don't see the clips in this video, that means it's copyrighted and they didn't let me do it. So what has basically happened is um, the Connell and Marianne have left school. They were in a relationship. They've broken up because Connell basically was embarrassed to be seen with her. And now they've met again at university after six or seven months at a party and they haven't seen each other. So question one, list five things we find out about Connell's flat. Question two, what impression does the writer create of Gareth in these lines? Um, question three, how Connell and Marianne have a connection and attraction to each other. How does the writer show this? 
And the last one, Connell feels very uncomfortable at the party. How far do you agree with this view? You'll notice that there's only four questions. Um, you'll have five questions in your normal exam. Just for time, um, I've not done the second how question, but the, sec the how questions are basically the same as each other. So like I said, I've only done four questions in this exam, in this video. So we've got the bullet point question, impressions question, just got one how question, and we've got one evaluation question as usual. Okay, so question one is the nice easy one really. Um, it's five marks. You should take about four or five minutes. You only answer from the line stated, just like every question in the exam. So you'll be told the lines to look at. It will normally be a list question, bullet point question. I've never actually seen a different kind of question, so it will be a bullet point question. You don't need to write PE, but you should try to write a full sentence. So my tip for this question would be don't just copy out the quotes. And I would start each sentence with the character's name or he, she. In this case, uh, the question is about the flat. So you could start each sentence with the flat. Okay, list five things we know and find out about Connell's flat. Connell tells him, it's a flat near college just off Brunswick Place. He and Niall have one box room between them with two single beds pushed up against opposite walls. They share a kitchen with two Portuguese students who are never home. Fla flat has some problems with damp and often gets so cold at night that Connell can see his own breath in the dark. But Niall is a decent person at least. He's from Belfast and he also thinks people in Trinity are weird, which is reassuring. Connell half knows some of Niall's friends by now and he's acquainted with most of his own classmates, but no one he would ever have a proper conversation with. So go through it, pause the video and see if you can just note down five things about Connell's flat. So example would be his flat is near college, just off Brunswick Place, full stop. That would be one mark. So pause the video. Okay, here are the ones I've got, mainly at the start of the extract, so let's put it into a sentence. Again, try to start, try to make each one a sentence, and the question is, list five, thing, five, five things you know about Connell's flat. So I'm trying to start each sentence with the flat, or something as close to it. So we've got the flat is next to a petrol station. I made that one up, actually. That was just for the mock. Here are the real ones. The flat is near college. He shares one room with Niall. The flat is off Brunswick Place. They share a kitchen with two Portuguese students. There are two single beds in their box room. There you go. You need five. There's the five. I've done a couple of extra ones. If you are unbelievably quick, you may as well shove in an extra one or an extra two, just in case you, you mess one up and you've got one in the bank. Okay. But obviously don't write six or seven answers if you're struggling for time or even if you're on time. That may be something you can go back at the end of the exam and do. Okay, question two, the impressions question. Be aware the impressions questions can be question three or four and it can be worth 10 marks, but normally it is question two and it's worth five marks. So there will be one impressions question in the exam. It can be two, three or four and it'll be worth five or 10 marks. Okay, so um, if it's a five mark question, you should be looking for four or five quotes in five or six minutes. If it's a 10 mark question, seven to 10 quotes in 13 minutes. So why do we want a lot of quotes? This is the first question in the exam really, where we have to give lots of quotes because we're doing PEs. And the main thing is you just get marks. The examiner says, we want quotes. They want you to prove your opinions. You won't get any marks for any opinions you make in the exam if you don't back it up. These two people here, red and blue, um, similar students in terms of how good they are at English. However, the person on the right realized I need um, quotes. They've got good exam technique. So the person on the left made lots of good points, but because they only used one quote, they can only get one out of five. Person on the, on the right made six quotes, so they got five out of five. So pretty much try to think about it as if you make a quote and give an explanation, you're almost going to get a mark per quote. Impressions means a kind of view you might have a place or a person when you read what is said about them. So for example, I might say someone is happy. If it said that the quote was, he was smiling ear to ear, I might put one impression I get is he was happy as he said he was smiling ear to ear. So very simple um, explanation. So my first tip for this question would be look at the verbs and adjectives for help. 
And my tip two would be, if the quote is obvious, there is no need to explain it. Just write it down into a sentence and move on. So for example, in a previous um, exam I've seen, it says, what impression do you get of the boy? And then it literally says, the boy is selfish. So I put one impression that I have the boy is he is selfish. I don't need to explain it. It's a really easy quote. It's already been explained. So just put it in a sentence and you'll get a mark. So an example question and answer of this one could be, what impression do you get of Connor with the quote, he stuttered over his speech? And I put, I get the impression Connor was nervous with the quote stuttered. So I've got my link to my question because it's in the impression. I've got my impression, what I think of Connell, and then I've got my quote to back up my impression. This is um, Marianne's mum, who we don't meet in the extract, but is in normal people. Let's say, for example, the quote was, Denise tutted at Marianne when she saw the length of her skirt. What opinion, what impression does that give me of, of Lorraine? Of, um, Denise, sorry, I put. I get the impression Marianne's mum is displeased with the length of Marianne's skirt, as it says she tutted when she saw it. Again, my link to my question, my quote, and there's my impression. So if someone tuts, they don't like something, they're annoyed or displeased with it. Nice and simple. So the question for this exam extract is what impression does the writer create of gareth in these lines so like i said i'll try and do the video and put it in there if possible so basically connor has gone to a party where it's a very sort of posh party in dublin at the posh university connor is not doesn't come from particularly um wealthy background hasn't got much money so it's the first party he's been to university he's feeling quite um, um he's feeling quite nervous and then we meet gareth who is someone from the university so let's Connell, good to see you, man. Uh, good to oh, see yeah. you. Thanks, yeah, how's it going? Yeah, no, not too bad. How are you? Yeah. Nice backpack. Very 90s. Nice. <laughs> you know Jenny, right? Uh, yeah, I think we're in a seminar together. Oh. Um, well, let me get you a drink. I'll do. Thank you. What have we got here? Uh, is beer okay for you? Yeah, cheers. Thanks. So you're not from Dublin then? Sorry? You're not from Dublin? Uh, no, uh, Sligo. Uh, yeah. I can see that. Yeah, my girlfriend's from Sligo, actually. Oh, <laughs> right, well, uh, there you go. Mm. <laughs> yeah, you live here, do you? Mm. Yeah, it's not bad for campus accommodation. Oh, it's lovely, yeah. Do you have your own room and that? Yeah, gotcha. You're not sharing, are you? Oh, I am, yeah. Oh. Yeah. That's, uh, that's brutal, man. <laughs> Jesus, what do you do if you want to have a girl over? Or a guy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that hasn't really been an issue so far, so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, listen, there are some people I want to meet. Yeah, Come on, do you want to see you later? <laughs> Sorry, man. Down here somewhere. Great party, right? Yeah. Marianne? Marianne, there's someone I want you to meet. This is Connell. Oh, right. Firstly, just as he decides to leave, Gareth comes in. Connell's intense relief at seeing Gareth triggers another wave of self-loathing, since he doesn't even know Gareth well or particularly like him. Gareth puts his hand out and desperately, bizarrely, Connell finds himself shaking it. It's a low moment in his adult life. People are watching them shake hands. Connell is certain of this. Good to see you, man, says Connell. Here's one of these annoying people who are involved in college societies. He went to one of the big wealthy schools in Dublin and people are always greeting him on campus like, hey Gareth, Gareth, hey. They're greeting him across the room just to get him to wave hello. Connell has seen it. I like the backpack, very 90s, says Gareth. Connell was wearing a completely plain navy backpack with no features to distinguish it from any other of the numerous backpacks at the party. People in college are like this, unpleasantly smug one minute and then showing off their good manners the next. You're not from Dublin, are you, says Gareth. No, Sligo. Oh yeah, my girlfriend's from Sligo. Connell isn't sure what Gareth expects him to say to this. Oh, he replies weakly. Well, there you go. Awkwardly, he looks around and says, You live here, do you? Yeah, says Gareth. Not bad for campus accommodation, is it? No, yeah, it's really nice, actually. Whereabouts are you living yourself? Okay. So, pause it. See if you can come up with four or five opinions you have. 
And remember, you don't have to have five different opinions with five different quotes. If you find two opinions and find five quotes, then that'll be fine. So you don't have to have five different opinions, okay? Uh, find the quotes that give you those opinions. So say, for example, you feel like Gareth is arrogant. Give me a quote to prove that he's arrogant. Um, so, for example, I'll give you an example. Um, one impression um, I have of Gareth is he comes from maybe a privileged background. Full stop. I get the this impression from the quote, he went to one of those big wealthy schools. So pause the video. So here are the ones I've gone for. What impressions do I get? Um, Gareth comes in Connell's intense relief. So that suggests to me that um, maybe uh, what impressions the right credit of Gareth. He's presented him in a positive, positive light to start because Connell's our main character. We like Connell in the extract. The, the, the idea that Connell's got a relief that he sees Gareth is probably gives a positive edge to the um, reader. Uh, have, however, that is contradicted straight away with he doesn't know if very, him very well or particularly like him. He also refers to him as annoying. People are always greeting him. He compares him to other people who are unpleasantly smug at uni. Um, and then you could argue when he's saying at the end, oh yeah, my girl from Sligo, that probably paints him quite a positive, like where it's almost maybe the conversation's a bit awkward and he's, he's trying to say things. He's trying to get um, on Connell's wavelength a little bit and give, it, give him something to talk about. So let's um, zoom into it. So what impressions do the right credit of Gareth from these lines? It's, remember, it's five marks. He is one of those annoying people. So tip from when I did this with my students in the mock is, this is a really simple quote, but don't repeat the quote in your answer. So what I mean by that is, don't put something like this. Another impression I get of Gareth is he's annoying. As he says, he's one of those annoying people. You're not going to get marks if you literally just put what is in the quote. If you would have maybe would have put, I get the impression Connell finds Gareth irritating, as he calls him annoying. I know it's pretty similar, but at least you're showing the examiner that you've picked up on the word annoying and you've shown the connotations. So again, with this question, I get the impression, I'm linking to my question, my opinion of Gareth is he's irritating, and I've backed it up with a quote. Here's another one. He do Connell doesn't particularly like him. So I've put, I then get a negative impression of Gareth as Connell says he doesn't really like him. As the re reader views Connell as an intelligent, level-headed character, we assume his judgment on Gareth to be sound. It says he went to one of those big wealthy schools. I've put, I get the impression Gareth is from a privileged background as he comes from one of those big wealthy schools. Okay, a few more. Would, um, I first, the first impression I get of Gareth is that Connell was pleased to see him. Connell was going to leave the party before Gareth arrives, and Connell feels an intense relief when he sees him. Another impression I get of Gareth is that he's formal and old-fashioned. He bizarrely shakes Connell's hand, and Connell sees this as a low moment. So you probably would think in university, if you're thinking about yourself, 18 or 19, you go to a party, probably is quite an old-fashioned thing isn't it, to shake someone's hand. And I put, finally, I get the impression he's popular around Trinity. People are always greeting him. They are all on first name terms with him and seem eager to get him to say hello. So if you zoom into that, always suggests, it's not like occasionally someone will be dying to see him. It's almost like he's a celebrity there. Whenever, wherever we go, always, 24-7, people want to say hello to him. So there you go. I've got, even though I've made six points, I've probably got eight quotes each of them you'll see, I've got my yellow, which links to my question. I've got a green, which is my opinion. And very importantly, I've got my blue, which is my quote. Remember, I can make all the points I like. If I don't have a blue, if I don't have a quote to back it up, I'm going to get zero. Okay, question for how. Uh, question three and four, how questions. Remember, you'll get two in your exam. We'll just look at one today. Teacher tip for the how question. Look at the verbs and the adjectives used. Obviously, you know adjectives and verbs, okay? So what I mean by that is, if I, if the question was something like how does the the how does the um, writer portray the boyfriend? If it was just I was standing next to my boyfriend, that is not going to tell me anything. However, if it said I'm standing next to my jealous boyfriend, that adjective tells me a lot about the boyfriend, okay? So for the how questions, that's two in the exam. They will be on questions two, three, and four, and they can be worth five or ten marks. Again, reasons why people didn't do very well on this question in November, or if you've got a grade three, 
was that you're spending too long on the five mark questions. We need more quotes and across the whole extract. Directly from the examiner's mouth, plenty of quotes gives a student high marks. So it's as simple as that. This is literally a quote from the head examiner at the exam board. Lots of quotes will give a student high marks. Again, it's all about quotes. Person on the right, lots of quotes. Person on the left, not a quote. The person on the right got more quotes, even though it was a five mark question. They still got more quotes than the person doing the 10 mark question. Again, make sure your quotes are from across the extract. You'd get marked down if you, would, you had a question like this and you only did quotes from the red bits, you've got to make sure you do quotes from across the extract to basically show that you've read the extract, but also there might be a change in character from the start of the extract to the end of the extract. The how question can be summed up by asking, why is the writer bothered to use certain words, verbs, and adjectives? Why have they used these intentionally or on purpose? So let's say, for example, we had an example of... Um, how does the writer present Marianne in this part of the extract? Okay, again, remember to look at the verbs, adjectives. Let's say my quote one for this question could be Marianne whispered to Connell. And my quote two could be Marianne ranted at Connell. So if, you'll see in a minute, just from changing that verb in the yellow, it completely changes how Marianne is represented in the extract so whispered when we think of whispered we think of the connotations of gentle soft quiet secret private okay so my question my quote could my answer could be the word whispered suggests marianne is being secretive and is saying something private to connell basically the connotations from the, this part of the video here so we've got the link to the question here we've got quote here and then i've got my explanation of why that quote what that shows me about marianne so she's whispering maybe she's being quiet for a reason she's being secretive yeah ranted okay we've changed the, the verb to ranted what do we think of ranted so just from changing that verb a massive change so if you change it to ranted what do we think about when people rant well shouting angry loud snarling the word ranted suggests Marianne is angry and is shouting at Connell. So just from changing that middle verb, so just from changing that yellow, my green completely changes. So in other words, just from changing my quote, the way Marianne is presented in this part of the extract completely changes. Okay, we won't bother doing that one. So the question in your mock is, Connell and Marianne have a connection and an attraction to one another. How does the writer show this? It's out of 10 marks, so you're looking for 7 to 10 quotes, 15 or so minutes, not including reading. I've missed you. Yeah. Yeah, you too. I was, uh, I was a bit worried when you left school and that. Uh, I was pretty down about it. Well, never hung out much during school hours. Oh, yeah. <laughs> what about Rachel? You still together? How did you hear about that? Through your brother? Saw photos on Facebook. Uh, um, no, um, oh, we broke up actually. Oh. Sorry. I don't think we were that compatible really. Hmm. What? No, I just, uh, I reckon I could have told you that. Well, maybe you should have would have helped actually. You weren't really replying to my texts at the time, so... Felt somewhat abandoned, Connell. Yeah, I felt a bit abandoned myself, didn't I? You disappeared. The Rachel thing, uh... Wasn't serious or anything. It's not really why I left school. Right. More of a last straw sort of thing. Yeah. I wondered if that was what it was. Really? Hmm, yeah. Hmm. Maybe you're telepathic. You know, I, I did used to think that I could read your mind at times. I don't know, maybe that's normal. It's not. You look really well. I know. It's classic me. Came to college and got pretty. No, you're always pretty. Very pretty. You know, um, you're, you're beautiful. Oh, well, haven't heard that one in a while. Does Garrett not tell you you're beautiful, no? <laughs> oh, he's, uh, he's probably very busy doing amateur drama or something. Debating when you're being cruel. Oh, yeah, I clocked that. See, so, yeah, I thought I was bad going out Rachel Moore and your boyfriend's a Holocaust and I are. 
<laughs> He's just into free speech. <laughs> okay, so we both failed on ideological purity. Yeah. <laughs> Are you dating anyone problematic at the moment? No. Not even anyone good. Finding it hard to meet people here. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's a bit different from home, I suppose. Mm. Probably why I'm good at it. I have some girlfriends I could introduce you to. Oh, yeah? Yeah. I have those now. <laughs> nah, I'm not sure I'd be their type. What do you mean? I don't know. What's not to like about you? That's a good question. I don't know. So let's read it first. Um, so what's happened is, I, I try, like I said, hopefully I'll be able to show you the clip. If I haven't, what's happened is they haven't seen each other. They've ended their relationship at school on bad terms where again, Rick, um, Connor was sort of embarrassed to be seen with Marianne. So they end, they parted and Marianne didn't come to school after their relationships uh, stopped. They're now at a party where they haven't seen each other for months. I've missed you, she says. This directness coming so soon and so unexpectedly makes him blush. Yeah, you too, he says. I was kind of worried when you left school and all that. Well, we never hung out much during school hours. No, yeah obviously. And what about you and Rachel, says Marianne? Are you still together? No, we broke up there during the summer. In a voice just false enough to sound sincere, Marianne says, oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, well, he says to Marianne, I wasn't that compatible with Rachel, I don't think. Marianne smiles now. Hmm, I probably could have told you that, Marianne sighs. That wasn't really why I left school, she says. It was more of a last straw thing. Yeah, he says, I wondered if that was what it was. She smiles like she's flirting. Really, she says. Maybe you're telepathic. I did used to think I could read your mind at times, Connell says. But maybe that's normal. It's not. They both smile. Connell looks at Marianne. She smooths down her dress. You look really well, he says. I know. It's classic me. I came to college and got pretty. He starts laughing. He doesn't even want to laugh, but something about the weird dynamic between them is making him do it. You were always very pretty, he says. I should know. You're very pretty. You're beautiful. She's not laughing now. A little teeth flash again and she lifts a hand to cover her mouth. He has some drink and takes in a sweet expression which he has missed. Are you seeing anyone at the moment? No, he says. Marianne gives a curious smile. Finding it hard to meet people, she says. He shrugs and then nods his head. Bit different from home, isn't it? He says. I have some girlfriends I could introduce you to. I have those now, she says. I'm not sure I'd be their type. They look at one another. One another. Her gaze unsettles him like it used to, like looking into a mirror, seeing something that has no secrets from you. What does that mean? She says. I don't know. What's not like? What's not to like about you? I don't know. He says. Good question. I don't know. He smiles and looks into his glass. He's attracted to it. He can admit that. After these months away from home, life seems much larger, and his personal dramas less significant. He's not the same anxious, repressed person he was in school when his attraction to her felt terrifying, like an oncoming train, and he threw her under it. He knows she wants she he knows she wants to show him that he's, she's not bitter. He could say, I'm really sorry for what I did to you, Marianne. He always thought if he did see her again, that's what he would say. So um yeah, so go through the extract again then. Pause the video. Highlight or look for five or ten quotes that show Mo Connor and Mary Han have a connection and attraction to one another. And the sort of structure you should be looking for a little bit is after you find your quotes is the writer shows a connection with the quote. Give me the quote and then explain to me how that shows a connection or they have a track attraction between one another. Remember, connection is linked back to the question. Green is my quote. Blue is my explanation. Here are the quotes that I've done. I've highlighted and we'll go through them. So um, I think I'll just explain them in um, in my little um, PEs. Okay, so my first one uh, that I've picked out is uh, that shows a connection in between um, from each other is when <clears throat> Marianne says, "Maybe you're telepathic," and Connell says, "I did used to think I could read your mind at times." Yeah. Hmm. Maybe you're telepathic. <laughs> you know, I, I did used to think that I could read your mind at times. So. If you zoomed into the word telepathic, what would it mean? Well, it would probably mean 
that you can read minds. Okay, so I put, we feel a connection when Connell was described as telepathic and Connell says, I could read your mind at times. This shows they both think they can communicate and know what each other are thinking without having to use words. So again, I'm, I'm zooming into the word telepathic, what are the connotations, or, or even being a human dictionary, what does telepathic mean? If I looked it up in the dictionary, I'd probably be able to say something like reading minds. So there's a connection between each other <clears throat> as they both think they can read each other's mind. But basically then, um, I did used to think I could read your mind at times. Um, Connell then says... Um, maybe that's normal, and Marianne replies, it's not normal. Yeah. Hmm. Maybe you're telepathic. <laughs> you know, I, I did used to think that I could read your mind at times. I don't know, maybe that's normal. It's not. So I put, Connell wonders if this is normal, but Marianne replies, it's not. Marianne is showing <clears throat> there's a special, unique bond between them okay remember always trying to pick up the easy quotes as well so one quote says she smiles like she's flirting so i put we feel an attraction marianne when she's described as flirting with connell so really simple if you're flirting with someone you there is some attraction so i put instantly we see an attraction and connection be between the characters Marianne unexpectedly tells Connell she missed him, and Connell replies, yeah, me too. So I've missed you. Yeah. Yeah, you too. Again, if there's a connection between the two and within one line of the whole extract, they've gone, they miss each other. That's a really easy one to pull in. Okay, and here's some um, few more. I put, we see a connection when Marianne is described as using a voice, just false enough to sound sincere. This tells the reader Marianne has to make an effort to sound genuine regarding feeling sorry for Connell splitting from his girlfriend. I put, we see Connell's physical attraction to Marianne as he says, she was always pretty, you're beautiful, and he's attracted to her. So I've got three separate quotes there from three separate parts of the extract. They're all about Connell being physically attracted to Marianne, so shove them all in together. Marianne asks Connell what's not liked about you. This shows Marianne thinks he's an admirable person who anyone would like. And last one I've put, Connell shows his attraction to Marianne as it's clear he's been thinking about her. The quote is, he always thought if he did see her again, that's what he would say. So he's almost been rehearsing the moment to see Marianne again and what would happen. And there they all are together. So feel free to pause the video again. Every single one of them. I'm linking to the question in the yellow. My blue is my quote, and my green is explaining why that quote means there's an attraction between Marianne and Connell. Okay, question five. This is actually question four for us, because remember, we've missed that question. But your question five is the evaluation question. And what I mean by that is that they give you a particular, um, in theory, sort of a, 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 a quote that a student has said in this case Connell feels uncomfortable at the party and then, and then they say how far do you agree with this and you basically always agree so if you're doing five to ten quotes you might want to do one quote where you don't agree and say something else but generally you're going to agree so question four is Connell feels uncomfortable at the party how far do you agree with this view you should talk about your own thoughts and feelings about how Connell was presented in the packet passage and how the writer has created these thoughts and feelings. So question five, last question in the exam. Agree with a question, e.g. Connell is uncomfortable at the party. Look for five to six quotes that prove this. I've gone slightly below the normal quote, just because it's the last question we'll be struggling for time. And you could do one or two quotes where you, where you say a different opinion of Connell. So maybe you could say, although I feel he's uncomfortable at the party, in this, with this quote, it might show he's confident. It's just the same as the other how questions in the exam we talked about. Just rephrase it to make it a how question. So what I mean by that is you could easily say, um, how does the writer make Connell seem uncomfortable at the party? Thank okay. you. So here's the extract. Connell doesn't know anyone at the party. The person who invited him isn't the same person who answered the door and with an indifferent shrug let him inside. He still hasn't seen the person who invited him, a person called Gareth who's in his class. Connell knew going to a party on his own would be a bad idea, but on the phone Lorraine said it would be a good idea. I won't know anyone, he told her, and she said patiently, you won't get to know anyone if you go out and meet people. 
Um, that's um, Lorraine is um, Connell's mum. Now he's here, standing on his own in the crowded room, not knowing whether to take his jacket off. Finally, just as he decides to leave, Connell comes in. Connell's intense relief at seeing Gareth triggers another wave of self-loathing, since he doesn't even know Gareth very well or particularly like him. Gar Gareth puts his hand out and does desperately, bizarrely, Connell finds himself shaking it. It's a low moment in his adult life. People are watching them shake hands. Connell is certain of this. Connell is wearing a completely plain navy backpack with no features to distinguish it from any of the other numerous backpacks of the party. People in college are like this, unpleasantly smug one minute and then showing off their good manners the next. You're not from Dublin, are you? says Gareth. No, Sligo. Oh yeah, my girlfriend's from Sligo. Connell isn't sure what Gareth expects him to say to this. Oh, he replies weakly. Well, there you go. Awkwardly, he looks around the room and says, you live here, do you? Yeah, says Gareth. Not bad for campus accommodation, is it? No, yeah, it's really nice, actually. Connell isn't sure... Oh, we've done that bit. Back home, Connell's shyness never seemed like much of an obstacle to his social life because everyone knew who he was already and there was never any need to introduce himself or create impressions about his personality. Now he has a sense of invisibility, nothingness, with no reputation to recommend him to anyone. Though his physical appearance has not changed, he feels objectively worse looking than he used to be. He's become self-conscious about his clothes. All the guys in his class wear the same expensive hun hunting jackets and plum-coloured chinos. Not that Connor has a problem with people dressing how they want, but he would feel a complete prick wearing that stuff. At the same time, it forces him to acknowledge that his own clothes are cheap and unfashionable. His only shoes are an ancient pair of Adidas trainers, which he wears everywhere, even to the gym. Gareth is saying something Connell can't hear now. The music is playing very loudly. Connell leans forward a little towards Gareth and says, What? My girlfriend, you should meet her, says Gareth. I'll introduce you. Glad of a break in the conversation, Connell fo follows Gareth out the main door and onto the front steps. Okay, so go through it. Highlight or look for five or ten quotes that show Connell is uncomfortable. Remember, we need that intro little quote. I agree, Connell's uncomfortable. If you don't do the intro sentence, you're going to struggle to get more than one out of ten. So I agree that Connell is uncomfortable at the party. I'll give you one quote that I think. One quote that shows me this is when he says he didn't know whether to take his jacket off. This signals to the reader, and then you can finish it. So you could say maybe this signals to the reader. Connell doesn't really know if he's going to stay or not, for example. Okay, here's the ones I've um, highlighted. Feel free to um, pause. Again, little intro sentence. I agree Connell feels comfortable. I'm linking back to the question. Okay, so let's look at one quote then. So I put Connell has a sense of invisibility. So again, if I looked that up in the dictionary, what would invisibility mean? Well, invisible, it would sort of basically mean I'm not being seen. Okay. So I've put one quote that tell me one quote that tells me Connell is uncomfortable is he has a sense of invisibility, nothingness, which shows me he's feeling ignored and insignificant. Again, don't put invisible because it's too close to the quote. But again, my yellow is my link into my question, my blue is my quote, and my green is my explanation why that quote proves Connell is uncomfortable. So if you're feeling invisible at the party, you feel ignored, insignificant, doesn't really matter if you're there or not. No one's going to miss you if you go. Okay, another one. <clears throat> the person who invited him isn't the same person who answered the door and with an indifferent shrug. So why would that make Connell uncomfortable? Well, if you shrug, so imagine going into the party, you ask someone a question you don't know, don't know anyone at the party, you don't know the person who's invited you, and this is what is met um, when you walk in. So I put the first person he meets at the party greets him with an indifferent shrug. This would make Connell feel unimportant and though no one has any interest in him being there. Um, I put the first reason I feel he feels uncomfortable is that he doesn't know anyone at the party. So nice and simple. If you don't know anyone at the party, you're going to feel uncomfortable. The quote, he feels objectively worse looking than he used to be. He's become self-conscious about his clothes. Well, why would he feel uncomfortable about that? I put, he feels worse looking than he used to be, and he's worried about his cheap and unfashionable clothes. He feels uncomfortable comparing himself to the privileged people at the party with their expensive clothes. So I've managed to get three or four quotes in there, and it's pretty um, self-explanatory, isn't it? If, he's, if he feels like he's wearing cheap clothes, and every single person at the party has got expensive clothes, he's going to feel uncomfortable. Another quote. 
People are watching them shake hands. Connell is certain of this. Why would that make him feel uncomfortable? So I put Connell feels uncomfortable as he feels people are watching how he behaves. Okay. And then it's a few shorter ones here. He also feels uncomfortable as he didn't want to go in the first place. So right at the, at the start, he tells us he doesn't want to go. The reader gets the impressions with the quote, Lorraine said it was a good idea, that his mum has had to persuade him to go for his own good to meet people. The quote, not knowing whether to take his coat off, shows how uncomfortable he is. He is unsure of his surroundings and how to act around the Trinity students. Another reason he feels uncomfortable is he's not very fond of the only person he knows. The quote is he doesn't know Gareth very well or particularly like him. So imagine if you were going to a party and the one person you actually knew, you, didn't, you thought was a bit of a prat. He also feels uncomfortable as he's struggling to make conversation with Gareth. In the text it says Connell isn't sure what Gareth expects him to say. Additionally, he replies weakly and looks around awkwardly. So if you look at those adverbs used, weakly and awkwardly, both of those suggest Connell's a little bit embarrassed and doesn't really know how to fill the conversation. And I put finally the quote, glad of a break in the conversation shows Connell is uncomfortable talking to Gareth. He's actually happy and relieved when the conversation has ended. Um, so he's glad. One of the connotations was glad, basically feeling happy or joyous that the conversation has had a bit of a break in it. OK, so we've done all the questions. Here's some structure for all the. So here's some structure for each question. These are all made up answers, by the way, but just for structure. So remember, question one um, is a bullet point question. Question two, impressions. Um, so one impression I get. So for each impression question, give me the word impression. Give me the impression. Then the quote to back it up. Remember the how question. Um, again, link to the question. Give me the quote and say what proves it. So, for example, Connell and Marianne have a connection to each other. I put the writer shows an attraction with the quote, it's not like this with other people. Marianne is telling Connell she thinks they have a special and unique relationship. Connell feels uncomfortable. How far do you agree? Remember that intro sentence. Then I've done another, um, <clears throat> I made up quote where I put, he seems uncomfortable with the quote, the conversation gave him a thumping headache. Why does that make Connell uncomfortable? This tells the reader the party's almost making him feel physically unwell. Okay, so here's some structure for all of them. I hope the video's been some use. Um, any questions, leave me a question in the comment box on YouTube.